Hello, uh, welcome back. This is the second part of uh, our yearly recap, really. So just a, a roundup of what on earth we've been doing uh, since we started the studio in uh, in March this year. Uh, we refreshed our beverages. Yep. And so we're gonna we're gonna carry on. So you know, last last time we talked about uh, the game production where it's at. What we've been doing the going wide and the, the vertical slice and narrowing the focus down and how that's shaping up. Um, so the, the second part of, of what we've been trying to do this year is build awareness of our game and marketing and just letting people know what we're doing so they're kind of interested in the game, uh, they can become aware of it. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the interesting things is actually, uh, well, I'm going to digress now slightly into one of the differences between like indie development, I will come back to it, don't worry, it's all related. One of the um, differences I found between indie development and um, working in like a larger studio is just how open everyone is and how much uh, people are willing to share. So a lot of the shows we've been to, we've been chatting to other developers, making like similar games. Um, uh, and I think repeatedly, one of the things they've talked about is the struggle with getting exposure or the struggle to get some kind of marketing or social media to get any momentum and get traction with that side of things. Because um, it's hard and I think it's really hard, particularly when you're, you know, there's only a few of you trying to make a game, that stuff inevitably pulls you away from production. Um, and we've been affected by that, definitely. Mm -hmm. But I think, and I'm not claiming to have all the answers at all, because they're far from it, but I do think one of the things that has really helped from us, um, like I was saying earlier to Alex, was that we've been quite strict with the things we try and do during the week. So we have a, a schedule of things we want to release. Um, so on Monday nights, we have a newsletter that goes out via email to people, uh, which you can sign up for on the website. Shameless plug. Uh, the Jedi Mind trick. <laughs> Uh, and that kind of recaps what we've done the week before. And initially we set up the, the newsletter and it was, we thought it was a cool idea, but we were a bit reticent to put it out without much content. So we kept waiting for like the perfect time. And then like a few weeks would go by and we still hadn't sent it. Uh, and then one of our friends, Craig, was like, well, I'm not on social media. Can you not just send out what you've been doing that week, like every week, um, as a catch-up? We were like, oh, that makes sense. So now it's just uh, as a matter of fact, like as part of the week, we do that on a Monday and then we know we're going to do a blog for the Friday. So um, we prep that in advance and then we do uh, screenshot Saturday as well on Twitter, which we do every week. So you get into that repetitive um, structure. And I think whilst it's still work doing those things, you start to accommodate into your working week a bit more because it just becomes the norm. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's very easy, it would be very easy if we kind of fell off, but we're not going to do one uh, this week. Then it would be very easy to go, you know, we'll, we'll let it slide and quickly we're working in, you know, in isolation without spreading the word about the, the game game. And, and that is, it's been a really, I think it's been a really, uh, it's been a really good thing for us to do, to be sharing things about the game, different elements about it as we're developing it and getting people's feedback. It's been really nice. I think it's definitely something that, um, that I've really enjoyed, actually. I think it's been too fair, yeah. too, too fair when you're saying about working at a big studio and people um, yeah, people are more guarded because they have to be. You know, it's, um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, just, it's, it's, it's got to be that way. But you're right. It's like going to the indie meetups, um, both the, the CB2 indies in Cambridge. There's the... Uh, the Essex meetup we go to, um, which is which is really cool, and the BAFTA crew meetups as well. Um, yes, yeah, so it's like it's really nice to go and meet people, and uh, and yeah, everyone is quite open and supportive, which has been which has been been really cool. But also, it's when we're actually sharing stuff on on social media, so people who haven't met in person, we've been very supportive virtually. Um, and like people who uh, who like what we're doing, and uh, I guess like our openness um, about what you know, the the stuff we're making, uh, that's been really great, and it's been quite a big thrill sometimes to actually have people contact you or start following you who actually like oh that's quite 
that's quite cool. Um, yeah, it's, so that's been there's been some some pretty pretty cool people that started to follow us, um, which we've been really flattered by. But it's been a yeah a real boost. I think it's nice to have those boosts when we're working away industriously in our our separate studies because uh, we don't work in the a shared space. Um, it's when you kind of when stuff like that happens, it's kind of nice to have a bit of a hey, you know, things are going going okay. It's a little boost, kind of. Uh, oh, so yeah, it's like being. On one hand, it's, there's obviously the general public people we don't know who, uh, when they follow and like our stuff, that's that's amazing. Because hopefully they're the guys that are going to buy the game. And then there's also like peer acceptance that might be like other game developers or like other artists we really like. Um, and you know, they then like our stuff that gives you uh yeah that little bit of um motivation or pat on the back and it kind of says yeah, what you're doing is okay carry on um i think that's really important like, like you're saying the solidarity of just being two of us um i think it's, be, it's natural to have some doubt or question with you doing the best thing all the time uh but that's actually what's really helpful about getting stuff out there is you're not suffering in silence. Um, Someone we're very mindful of was like not taking like three or four years to make a game and then put it out that then no one cared about. Or knew about. Or knew about. Yeah. Uh, so I think we're reasonably confident at this point that there's something that people find about the game and the setting and the characters that people find that appealing, which has been, um, yeah, it's been really cool. Well, I, mean, I think you talked about, you know, we talked about the press in the last video in terms of um, Eurogamer and Kotaku and, and we actually, we approached them initially because that was, no one knew about us and so we asked them if they wanted to run a piece on us to uh, um, talk about what we were doing and where we'd come from. But since then actually a lot of the press has just happened organically, so we had uh, a PC Gamer piece, uh, official PlayStation magazine hmm. and both of them actually they got in contact with us and I think that was because we had enough presence and we'd been floating around on the kind of digital sphere so to speak um, and people, <laughs> it's definitely a saying, uh, people had seen what we'd done and, and thought there was something they were worth covering ultimately. Yeah, um, I think that's outside of press stuff as well we've been contacted by lots of other interested parties which has been which has been great and it's been nice that those aren't opportunities we've had to go out and and hunt down. Um, so it's almost like we're we're firing stuff out. It's like a little calling card um, into the ether, and you know, and people pick it up. And it's kind of uh, that's nice. And also, yeah, the fact that there are just two of us, the fact that we can just be sharing this stuff, and maybe that brings opportunities to us. Um, that seems to be working out well so far. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. But back to the, just going again to talking about the, um, when we were talking about the, kind of the generosity of spirit um, in the kind of indie dev community, and that's, you know, and to, I guess towards indie devs mostly on um, social media, at least we haven't had any bad experiences. So, um, but one of the things that we wanted to do is try and like give a little bit back or just kind of say thank you to some of the help and support that we've had from some people that we've we've met was to do some tutorial stuff which with a lot of our social media stuff we'll kind of try some experiments and see what happens see what people like and what people don't like and we found that um we've done not, not done many but we've done like a couple of like tutorials or little investigations into certain aspects so we did some unity ones and did like a poncho one which went a bit Crazy. bonkers and then we did well i think the first one, trademark the name yeah that's the key <laughs> yeah i'm sure that's it um, but that was kind of nice, not just because it kind of raised the uh, the kind of profile of the game, even you know, even though that is cool. It was just nice to actually. That was stuff that we'd spent a bit of time digging into, investigating, and it was nice just to be able to um, uh, to to put it out there, and people really appreciate. Really it. cool when people actually start using it and making their own. Stuff. Yeah, and we had a few bits like that where people, you know, we did one which was a breakdown of the character facial rig, um, and it stuff was like quite. It's like quite high level, not super detailed, but then people are like posting us stuff back, which is the the work they've done using some of our methods or they've been inspired by some of the kind of art styling stuff. That's um, that's really cool. It's really exciting to wake up in the morning and to find this, you know, 
someone on the other side of the world's um, like taken something that you're working on and, and created their own thing with certain aspects of it. So that's, um, yeah, that's really neat. Um, we haven't done one of those for a little while. I think we don't, we're not going to do them for the sake of doing it. I think if there's another thing that comes up where it's, it might be suited, we'll, we'll do one. But um, yeah, we're, we're also we're busy making the game. Um, must not forget about making the game. Must not forget about making the game. It's pretty important. Uh, yeah, don't know where what else there is to to talk about that kind of that side of things really. But I think that we've been just been really enjoying it. That's been nice. I mean, it does take uh, time out from some of our dev stuff to you know prep assets and stuff. But I think the the pain of has has gone with that stuff because we're we're in the habit of it. So we're just rolling with it all the time. We know it's something we've got to do, and we just work. So that we create that stuff as, as a byproduct of the stuff we're doing anyway. Um, well, that's, yeah, everything we, like you say, everything we do is what we're working on anyway. I think previously we've done some stuff bespokely and then that does feel very much feel like you're stealing time away from the game. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a byproduct. Um, also, you know, like the, when we do concept art and stuff and actually just record doing the concept art and then you actually have something you can share as a time lapse and it's like just a, an easy win that stuff because you have to do that work anyway you see a bit of polish and, yeah. and editing to get it um to the required standard but well that's the kind of thing that people find really intriguing as well i think you can show the finished piece of concept art or you can show the finished character i think giving an insight uh, i think this is probably for other indie devs but also just like people who play indie games in general, people are interested in the process and where things have come from. And I think showing people that, that insight, uh, if you can capture it, like with the time-lapse stuff, uh, then that's like really good. It's something that people, it's an extra peeling back the layers and allowing people to see some of the nuts and bolts and the mechanics underneath, um, which I, I love to see. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why we've started uh, sharing some of that stuff. It's the insights that we find interesting and exciting, so it's kind of nice to be so yeah, yeah. Grem technical gremlins have struck, and uh, the camera ran out of of memory space. We talked for what, another six, seven hours. Several, good stuff. several days, several days of chat. Um, but yeah, we were uh, we were probably waffling on anyway. Um, yeah, it's good self editing by the camera. Yeah, it was very selective, uh, selective editing by the camera. Um, let's, let's not do it now. Let's not do it now. Uh, we'll wrap it up there. I think the. The only other stuff we really had to say was uh, was just thank you, really, um, for everyone we've connected with, uh, people who've seen the game, taken an interest in it. That's been one of the things that's, that's been a massive boon for us for this year. So, uh, yeah, we just want to say uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and if there is anything you would like to see more of in terms of like the tutorials we talked about or any particular stuff that we share that you really like like time lapse or character stuff or more of this video blog stuff if you find it interesting um or you know if you just don't want us to do it anymore you can tell us that as well <laughs> uh, but yeah your feedback is welcome cool good all right bye bye, bye.